My car was parked in that exact spot when I was babysitting across the street the other day. Is, is the camera that's hooked up to that monitor on all the time? Mm, 24 hours a day. Yeah. And, and, and is it always pointed in that direction? Well, yeah. See, I'd like to see who's coming before they walk. Oh, yeah. you are a lifesaver. If I'm right, your camera may have caught the vandal in the act. Okay, uh, it happened on June the 26th. So, do you have uh, uh, the tape of what was recorded that day? Well, I can't help you there. You can't? Okay, well, uh, how much? How much? I would be glad to pay you uh, uh, the cost of replacing the tape or anything for you, uh, for your trouble. No, 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 no. See, that, that's not the problem. See, the, the tape from that day that you're looking for would be erased by now. You've been looking all over for me, haven't you, Dr. Collins? You strike me as someone in a lot of pain. I'd like to help you if I can. <laughs> I don't need your help. I like who I am. Isn't this ironic? Here I am, your biggest fan. And yet you're the one who died to meet me. So you and I have never met. Wouldn't you like to know? So, you're my biggest fan, but earlier you said that I deserve to die. You're contradicting yourself. No, I'm not. They're both true. I have the utmost respect for you. But you deserve to have your heart cut out for what you've done. What have I done? Do I sound eager to pour my feelings out? You're the one who called. True. Then I suggest everyone listening stay tuned. This voice may be the last thing my next victim will hear. <laughs> Are you sure you don't have the tape? Maybe you just set it aside somewhere. Well, I, I doubt it. Although my wife rotates the, the tape. Your wife? Okay, well, is it possible that maybe she kept that one? I could check in the storeroom, but... Oh, please. I, really, I wouldn't count on finding anything. Please, please check. I would do anything to take it back. Well, you can't, Eve. You can't! My daughter is in there now. Ma'am? Are you all right? I'm fine. I'm fine. Did you... did you come up with anything? Oh. One of the tapes is missing, and it appears to be the one that you're looking for. Is it, is it possible you could have misplaced it? Hmm. Never done that before, so... Someone stole it. Someone broke in here and stole that tape. Well, no one would break into a jewelry store for a VHS cassette and leave everything else untouched. I, I, I don't see how that could happen. Oh, I can. I can definitely imagine that. That piece of evidence is worth more than all the gold and the jewelry you have in this place. That piece of evidence could nail loose, could nail the vandal to the wall, and without it, I'm back to square one. You want to get something off your chest? How about the fact that you've murdered four innocent people? Innocent is a relative term. The people in your book deserve what they got. The people in my book are fictional characters. Thinly veiled portraits of real-life losers. Cassandra May, Grace Sullivan, Jake Marshak, hardly losers in anyone's book. Don't forget Bennett Devlin. Are you going to tell me the world isn't better off without that pig? Doc, nobody. 
But he liked Vinny Devlin, but he didn't deserve to die. So you think it's your divine right to decide whose life is worth living? Why not? You believe it's yours. Isn't that why you described Devlin's murder in such wonderful detail? You wanted him to get what was coming to him. That's not true. What about Grace Sullivan? She never hurt anyone in her life. Grace was suffering because the man she cared about didn't want her. I put her out of her misery. Well, you sound Next. like... You sound like you know an awful lot about Grace's personal life. Did she know the same about you? Isn't it true that she found out who you are? So you eliminated her? If she were alive, I'm sure Grace would find that flattering. But she wasn't that smart. No one has the slightest hint who I am. But you should have seen the look in Jake Marshak's eyes when he found out. <laughs> Tell me, what was it? Surprise? Anger? Or fear? Telling you that would be a clue. No, it wouldn't. Well, isn't that why you called? You want to give me a clue? <laughs> you think this call is a cry for help? Wrong again. I'm sorry for what's ever hurt you so badly. Apologies won't bring back the dead Dr. Collins. And it won't stop others from joining them. That's all the time we have for tonight. Uh, you know, we should point out that we don't know for sure if that was the real general homicide killer or not. But everyone in Port Charles, be extra careful. Please. This is Mickey May signing off. Be safe, Port Charles. We're clear. What the hell did you think you were doing? Oh, well, you know what, Garcia? Kevin at least has made contact with this brute, something you're unable to do, it oh. appears. Okay, who's in charge? I am. It's my show. I, I should just run everybody in for obstruction of justice. You ever hear of free speech, Garcia? So you've decided to take matters into your own hands, Kevin? Well, how many bodies do you think have to pile up before you're able to catch him? We've gone to music. I want to find out the buzz on the numbers. Dr. Collins, thank you. You can come back any time. There won't be another time. Garcia, whether you like it or not, I feel responsible for the people who've been killed. Now, since it's too late to take back writing the book, I intend to do anything I can to make this stop. Kevin, it's not your job. Everyone I care about in the world is in Port Charles. Now, I'll be damned if I'll just sit on my butt while some person uses my book as an excuse to kill people. I'm not going to let you interfere with an investigation, especially if you're going to provoke this guy. You know, it could be a woman. You're not married, are you, Garcia? Kevin, you know I'm not. Well, neither am I, but I'm about to be. Sometime after that, I hope to be a father. I'd like to be able to believe that my family is safe. For some reason, this person's made me a central figure in this. I can't walk away. Did you hear it? Hear what? The general homicide psychopath was on the radio. You're kidding. No, Kevin Collins went on Tell Me About It, that call-in show on WLPC, and dared the guy to call in. Well, that sounds dangerous. The last thing anyone should be doing is pressing some monster's buttons. Kevin has guts, and the guy took the bait. It was a man? Well, it, it, it was impossible to tell. Who, whoever it was used something to disguise their voice. Well, what did they say? He or, or she justified their actions by saying the people who died deserved it. That is sick. I mean, do you think the cops identified this nut job? Not from the voice. Uh, uh, package for Julie Devlin. Yeah, I'm Julie Devlin. Yeah, sign right there. A little late for delivery, isn't it? I got backed up. You guys hear that wacko on the radio? Hey, I wasn't at something. <sighs> I'll be sleeping with my shotgun tonight. <laughs> there you go. Thanks. Maybe it was a prank call. There was something in the way he or she spoke. This person sounded for real. You know, for a second, I thought I recognized the voice. You said it was disguised. Even disguised, there was something that sounded familiar. I'm going to be paying very close attention to everything people say to me from now on. You never know when you might be chatting with a killer. Detective. 
He just gave you this huge, huge lead. You should be down at the station following up on it instead of standing here harassing him. What lead, Lucy? All I got was five minutes of bad radio. I didn't do it to boost ratings. We need to understand this person if we have a hope in hell of ever catching him. Who says the caller was even our perp? Uh, speaking of suspects, where's the professor? Victor wasn't feeling well. He's at home resting. Uh, does he happen to be reclining near the phone? Don't be ridiculous. Victor did not make the call. Let's stick to the issue here. Which is? Which is? Kevin just made contact with this, this terrorist person. Doesn't that make any points with you at all? If the call was genuine. But that stunt could have had any psycho in earshot dying to call in. Anybody could have gotten through. We're not looking for a psycho. Psychos are out of touch with reality. If this person had any touch of psychosis, he wouldn't be able to deal in the real world. This person has no trouble functioning in society. That's how he gains access to his victims. He or she. And it sounds like this person planned But everything, honestly, right? we don't know for sure if it's a man or a woman. I'm still listening. Once a perpetrator hits a rhythm, he or she commits essentially the same crime the same way over and over again, right? Mm -hmm. I was made detective a long time ago. You haven't told me anything new. Well, to change the M.O. of every murder the way this person has is risky. He thinks he's smart enough to take that chance and not get caught. That could be his Achilles heel. So you were hoping this guy would be taking the risk of calling in? You're making this personal, Kevin. That's not a good thing. My book's providing a framework for a serial killer. He's killed people I care about. He tried to murder the woman I love. This has never been anything but personal. Doc, do you think that she or he will call again? Whoever it is craves a dialogue with me. I think it's a safe bet they'll call. Garcia, I'm sorry I didn't give you a heads up before this. What do you say to tracing the phones the next time I do the show? You better count on it. Well, you could save yourself a little time and put a tap on Eve's phone. Hey. Why the long face? I thought I had her. I really did. Who? Public enemy number one. Don't tell me you're on the trail of the general homicide killer, too. <sighs> Come on, I'm just trying to stay out of the frozen food section so I don't end up in a meat locker like I did in the book. No, I mean, with everything that's going on, with Scott and with Serena, my main problem is still the queen of the worst dressed list. Oh, you mean Lucy? Everything that I've figured out so far has pointed to her tampering with my car. She went to pick up Serena at ballet class when she knew I was going to. I have a receipt that proves I filled up my tank the day before the accident. The guys in the mechanic shop said that there were no leaks and no holes in the line. So how did I run out of gas? Do you think Lucy would really go that far? I mean, would she risk hurting Serena just to make you look bad in front of Scott? No. She would never intentionally hurt Serena. I mean, she had no idea the car would roll down an embankment with Serena in it. But I do know that she would do everything in her power to make me look irresponsible in front of Scott. Well, if you say she's capable of it, I believe you. But how do you intend to prove it? I thought I was on my way to doing just that. The jewelry store across the street from Scott's place. It has a camera that's trained on the exact spot where I was parked. Then what's the problem? The tape has somehow mysteriously disappeared without a trace. Hmm. Sixth floor. Yeah, hold on. It's for you. <clears throat> this is Dr. Lambert. Uh, Dr. Lambert, this, uh, well, I think I found what you're looking for. You're kidding me. You found the tape? Well, my wife used it to video my son's ball game, but, uh, no, she taped over some of it, but there might be some of the surveillance camera stuff left at the end. She's bringing it over to the store now. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. I will be right over. Thank you. What was that about? I may have just won the lottery. <sighs> the hospital in Minnesota thought my dad was coming back to teach. I feel like I'm about to visit my father's grave for the first time. His personal effects should have gone to your mother. With my parents divorced, I was the next of kin. I drew this for him when I was 10 or 11. I had no idea he kept it all these years. 
Parents never throw anything away. It's been a long time since I thought of my father as being sentimental. Figuring out who our parents really are is called the end of childhood. He was always so busy. I never thought he noticed anything about me growing up. Enough on your mind dealing with your father's past can wait. Well, I don't want to wait. If I don't do this now, I never will. What is that? A note from Eve thanking Ben for the pen he gave her. Is that Eve? And look at what she's holding. That's the pen. That's the pen used to kill your father. And they say dead men tell no tales. Are you jumping on the Lucy Co. bandwagon? She's been saying Eve killed your father from the beginning. No, I thought Eve was a suspect all along, too. I only backed off when it looked like Lark might be doing all this. Then everyone thought Jake was this closet sicko with a grudge. But now that the case is open again, Eve gets my vote. Scott would have figured it out, don't you think? Scott, we've already seen the lengths to which he'd go to to protect Eve. The whole time he represented me, he knew about her bloody bracelet. Thanks for coming. Yeah, sure. You said it was important. What do you got? See anything familiar? That's the same pen used to murder my father. Where'd you get this? I was going through my father's personal effects from his days in Minnesota. Are you going to arrest Eve? Julia, it looks like the same type of pen, but we can't assume it's the actual murder weapon. What do you want? Eve Lambert to walk around with a sign on her back saying I did it? This isn't enough evidence to make an arrest. It's enough to haul her butt in for questioning. She's not going to leave breadcrumbs for you to follow, Detective. Aren't you forgetting we found a bottle of morphine in his uh, medical bag? You know, shouldn't you put a tail on her or something? Look, no promises, but I'll see what I can do. After what happened to Serena Baldwin, you should arrest her before she hurts anyone else. The woman is a menace. He's about to turn this amazing double play. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> all right, Nathan. Sir, <laughs> if you don't mind, I'm kind of anxious to get to the end. Oh, yeah, right. Thanks. Thanks. Fast forward there. Wait, 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 wait. Stop, stop. What's that? Go back. Go back. Mm. Right there. Oh, that's the that's the parking lot at the at the ball field. There's my wife. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> May I, please? No offense, sir. I'm sure you have a very lovely family, but I Bravo, Monk! You were brilliant! I didn't miss a word. Uh, what about a homicidal maniac? Well, Victor, obviously you heard he or she used some sort of voice-altering mechanical thingy. How are you feeling? Tip-top. He got to get back on the case. I really believe you've got the killer on the run. I have my doubts. You know, I think it'd be kind of fun just to put a little trace on Eve's phone. Gee, I don't think things will go quite so easily. First of all, we don't know if the caller was the actual murderer. Second of all, you're wrong about Eve. I feel like having that tattooed across my forehead. Oh, please, please don't use that word, tattoo. What's your next move? Victor, even though we are jesting about this, this really is not a game, you know. Oh, contraire, ma chère. Monk has just executed a very solid, if very dangerous, counter... You used your pawn. Yes, I did. You used your pawn! Wait, 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 wait. gentlemen, gentlemen, please. Speak English. I want to know about this pawn thing. And what do you mean, dangerous? In the game of chess, the pawn is a paradox. It's simple, complex. It attacks and defends. Now, at the end of the game, you can use a pawn for anything. But in the beginning, you may have to sacrifice one or two for the greater good. Well, you know, I have a feeling that Miss Evie's going to make a move soon. She really is ticked off. She wasn't invited to our wedding. Lucy, I respected how you felt about inviting Eve to our wedding. Please, do me the courtesy of not accusing my friend of being a serial killer again. At least until after the wedding. Until then, let's just concentrate on who we love. Namely, each other. You're right. I'm going to concentrate on you and me and Victor and Sigmund and most especially Serena. Doc, I can't wait to see her walk down that aisle as our little flower girl. Just to see her do that after all that's happened will 
Make everything almost perfect. That will be a day to remember. Best day of my life. Hey, wait. That looks like something. I knew it. Is that your car? Yes, it is. What, what, what's that person doing? She's draining the gas from my tank. You know her? I know that woman like the back of my hand. And now, I'm going to prove to everyone that she's the viper I always thought she was. This is Kevin Newman. And Lisa McCree. Tomorrow, actress Natasha Richardson talks about tackling, remaking the classic, The Parent Trap. And we'll take you live to Los Angeles for the Emmy nominations tomorrow on Good Morning America.